Hi there, and welcome to the Language Gym. This is uh, the second session on uh, teaching verbs. In the first session, I made some very important points, which I hope um, resonated with you. The first point is the fact that verbs are the most important part of a sentence. And a kid that is producing a sentence need to master the verb and what comes next. A range of what comes next. In other words, collocations and colligations. They need to, they, they need to master the verb. But that on its own is not enough. If you want to produce a sentence effectively and fluently, you need to have a range of um, phrases, words that comes next, what we call collocations and colligations. Collocations are word partnerships. Colligation means the pattern that follows a verb. For instance, I give a book to Mary. Okay, I want you to come uh, to the party. So the pattern that glues the verb and what comes next. I also said that this um, use of verbs and what comes next has to be fluent, has to be automatic. The student shouldn't be thinking because under real operating conditions, you don't really want to involve consciousness, working memory. You want to bypass your conscious self, working memory. In other words, an example is when the kids are under exam conditions, they will say, je joué au foot. Je mange une pizza. Je suis allé au McDo. Those things they do know and they say very fast. Those are an example of fluency. Imagine getting the students to do that at the same speed with every single verb you teach them. That requires specific training. So whilst you do want to have your gap fills, you want to have your structured drills, you need to make sure that you, um, what you you do what we call a desirable difficulty. In other words, you, you train the students uh, by um, posing challenges, desirable difficulties exactly, which make uh, the brain uh, operate faster. Um, an example, for instance, just to draw an analogy from uh, from um, football or from uh, athletics, sprinting. If you want somebody to run faster, what do you do? You first get them to run uh, um, normally and then you start uh, teaching them techniques to run faster by giving them some hurdles. For instance, you might, you might put um, weights on their ankles or you might ask them to uh, run uh, uphill. So imagine doing the same in terms of language training. What could this, uh, these desirable difficulties uh, be? I'll give you some example. I'll give an example of a, a Pakistani student that I used to teach. I wanted to train my students in faster recognition of verbs. Why? Of course, verbs are the most important uh, thing in the, in, in the world in terms of making a sentence. And also, when you read, you read at the speed of 250, 300 words per minute. So, uh, if you want the student to, to become fluent, being able to recognize verbs at the speed of light would be important. Well, by playing the boxing game of the language gym, my students could actually, this particular student of mine could actually recognize 120 words per game. And the game being two minutes long, that meant one word per second. And that was in year seven. And we're talking about 30, 40 verbs per activity. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So let's look at the boxing game, which was created exactly for this, to develop fluency in, in uh, um, reading. So uh, let's look at um, intermediate, and let's look at important verbs in the infinitive. Or should we do something a bit more complex? Let's do um, verbs are in are attendre. So the boxing game works like this. You start the game. You have a sentence in English. You have, as you can see, a number of options. Il ne répond ENT, il ne répond with an S, il ne répond IZ, et il ne répond jamais, which is the correct one. If you press the correct one, you're sorted. As you can see, you've got two minutes to finish. Uh, to complete the game, and the person who can gets you know gets the most corrected ones, of course, the highest score in the classroom uh, will be 
uh, the winner. Do you hear me? Tu m'entends. Whenever you get it wrong, you lose a life, as you can see. Now, this is highly competitive games. They get, the, the, the kids love it. It's retrieval practice that is best. But why do I, did I create this game? Uh, well, number one, I wanted to teach verbs with their collocations. You never find single words, rarely, just a few. You must have also single words because kids need to also know what, what, what the, which word in a chunk means. But by doing this, the kids automatized, of course, uh, verbs with their collocations and colligation. But most importantly, I wanted to develop speed of recognition that we know that for research is the most important thing when it comes to reading fluency. Speed of recognition. The higher the rate of speed, the higher the fluency in reading. Of course, provided that you have a wide range of vocabulary too. But another thing that I created on the language gym to develop uh, fluency in production is the verb trainer. So let's go. Now let's change language. Let's go to Spanish. So what's the verb trainer? The verb trainer, as the, as the word says, is basically a, 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 a tool to train uh, the students in verb conjugation. So imagine you've done your, all your listening, you've done your modeling, then you've done your listening and reading to verbs. You will have done work on uh, recognizing word endings, you will have done your dictations, you would have done your uh, reading aloud games. You are if you're familiar with my games, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then you would have done your, um, your, your structured drills that I mentioned in the previous uh, um, video. You would have done your uh, no snake, no ladders, your pyramid translation, you would have done your fast and furious, you've done your fluency cards and whatnot. Uh, but if you want to develop fluency, you need to make sure that the recall is as fast as possible. So if you recall fast and furious, for instance, the verb trainer fits in very well with that sort of game because it basically introduces a desirable difficulty. The kids need to produce as many correct conjugation as they can under time conditions. And prior to the timed conditions, you can do the unlimited time where the kids basically is just sparring, it's just practice, it's just like, there's no match yet. Um, it's basically the equivalent of a, um, the tennis player bouncing the, uh, the ball against the wall. So we've got two modes. This is, I'm gonna show you to the normal time mode, which is the one which introduces a desirable difficulty. You can choose the minutes. So if you wanna enhance the, um, the desirable difficulty, you want to make it harder, more challenging, of course, you will do five minutes. Uh, if not, you can do up to 15 minutes. Next, you will select now, for instance, uh, imagine you're working on the present, present indicative. Uh, let's choose all the first three pronouns because maybe the children are just a uh, primary or secondary. You've been teaching the AR verbs, so let's go with that. Now, as you can see, there is a picture for the verb. There is the English and the translation, so we have dual coding, the affinitive with the, uh, with the picture. Of course, if the kids is, is, is working under the time condition, might not actually look at the picture, but he will have the translation here. You help. So each time, they see ayudar and tu. That translation helped them understand and memorize the meaning of whatever verb you're dealing with. In this case, is ayudas. Good. Now is el a usted. This time the verb is buscar, to look for. Usted. Busca. Now is to play an instrument, tocar. Imagine that you forgot. Oh God, what is it? Look at the cheat sheet here, give you the answers. In this case, in this case, it is toca. Now, as you can see, it can be a brilliant tool, especially under time conditions, but you might argue that it could be a little bit boring. Well, the good thing is, and I'm not gonna show you this now because there is a video that uh, Dylan has already posted on this channel where he explains clearly how to do this, 
you can actually connect uh, the sentence builder to the function live game. Live game allows you basically to play against the clock as a classroom live. So in real time on the screen, the kids see who has done what, at what speed, who is number one, who's number two, who's number three, and there is a leaderboard there, which of course stimulates the kids to do a little bit better. You might have kids who are not game to this, they don't want to risk it, they feel daunted by this. They can practice in this builders in the non-time mode, as you remember. They can do it at their own time. They don't have to be part of the game. When they are ready, they can do that. Now, does this tool, just like the boxing game, realize fluency? No, but it helps. How does it help? Well, number one, it definitely, definitely helps in the writing process. Number one, because the kids can has now develop fluent recall. If you've been teaching like I teach using constructions, the kids have the pattern. Now it's just a, 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 the job is, is just to slot in the verb where they need to replacing another verb, yeah? So once you have patterns, you can teach single verbs. If you're just teaching single verbs too cool, then the utility, I think, of this tool is less. Another great advantage of this is that is, um, is something that makes, of course, uh, language conjugations uh, learning very different from learning from a worksheet. Number one, because you have, of course, a scaffold, the cheat sheet here, which is always there to help you. Two, for the obvious reason that you get instant feedback. If I get it wrong, like here, for instance, you know immediately that it's the wrong answer and you can double check with the cheat sheet. And of course, there is the desirable difficulty of the time limit, which enhances learning. And you are basically uh, uh, encouraging the kids day in, day out to do better. Another advantage is that if you are, a, you are in a one-on-one -on -one school where mobile phones or um, tablets um, are given to the students, uh, it's obvious that this allows you to have five, a 10 minute slot every day where you can uh, practice whatever tense, whatever range of tenses or verbs that you want to practice. So imagine doing this five, 10 minutes every day, maybe with a leaderboard uh, in a dedicated uh, time slot in each lesson. Imagine how uh, more likely the kids are to learn it, how much more fun they're learning it from a worksheet. And I'm talking for somebody who sells worksheet on the TS and soon on the language gym, we'll have a whole section devoted to that. How can you prepare the kids for this still using the language gym? Well, let's go back to languages. Let's go back, let's, let's do French. If you go to the workouts, uh, I think in the previous uh, uh, session, I spoke about modal verbs. So let's go to modal verbs. Let's go grab grammar module and let's get irregular verbs and you'll find devoir, pouvoir, or vouloir. And there's plenty of activities here. They focus on verbs on their own, and later on in context. There's multiple choice quizzes. There's focus on each individual verb. Translation stuff, and then in context. Is that, as you notice, across different, uh, that's school, that's healthy lifestyle, and that's home life. This is actually a pretty slim unit compared to others. Let's go back to the menu. I can show you, for instance, uh, present here of irregular verbs. You can see how many um, uh, activities there are, ranging from visual activities on. Um, just infinitives to multiple choice quizzes and it always starts from the first person and then it develops gradually to different um, persons of the verb. As you can see there's a lot of activities just to recap to show you quickly. 
there's an odd one out that matches, there is translation, there's um, uh, conjugation, uh, translations, there's uh, 17 activities just on this particular uh, um, set of verbs. So, in conclusion, the language gym can help you greatly in this respect. Um, what is uh, brilliant about the verb training in particular is that the kids love the live game and the leaderboard. If you're not sure how to set up a live game, there is a video, a brilliant video made by uh, Dylan, who's a, a tech whiz, so it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, mine are very material, and as you can see, completely spontaneous and, uh, and unrehearsed, so they're bound to be hesitations and stammering and all sort of things. I hope this was helpful. If you wanna use um, the language gym, um, uh, tools in a, in a nice instructional sequence. You could do first your, um, your centers building, of course, your modeling through listening, and then you could do the workouts, the ones I just showed you, where you have this structural gap fill quizzes, which acquaint the students, make them familiar with the verbs. Then you could do your boxing game where you developing reading fluency. And finally, you can end up with the verb trainer first in untimed mode when the students have basically no time constraints and later on in time mode i hope this was helpful all the best and uh, please stay safe uh, you know it's quite dodgy out there at the moment ciao